Okay, this is a walk through how to do doodle jump using the micro bit. Um, and you should be able to see in the top uh, right hand corner, that's my micro bit, so we're going to send the code to that. I have to be honest, my ability to play this is a little bit limited, but we can certainly code it, which is the key thing at the moment. Now, I'm going to program this using Moo, which is downloadable here. If I was teaching this in the classroom, you'd be, we'd be using classroom.microbit, but there is also python.microbit.org. So there's about three ways of getting in to do this. Um, it is also possible to use Git to make your own version of um, uh, Python, which will allow Microbit to program through idle, but we're not going to look at that today. Okay, so basically to start with this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to open up Moo. And once I've got Moo open, I'm going to start by um, importing the micro bit and the random modules. Now, because I'm running through this fairly quickly, I'm going to leave the comments out for the most part here. But it is good practice for you to put them in, not least of all so you know where you're up to. So here we're going to go for it. Now, obviously, one of the things I'm going to try to do today is to make fewer typing mistakes as I go through this. So we're importing. Um, uh, using the wildcard, so basically importing the whole of the microbit functions. Then we're importing random because we're going to need that later. Okay. What we're now going to do is we're going to create a function. And what this is going to do is it's going to check that some of the values we put in the game later on are between this minimum and maximum. So we've got three variables. We've got the minimum, maximum, and the value. Um, but this check bound function will get run later on. So at the moment, this isn't doing very much, but uh, we're going to need it, so let's create it. So we're going to define, and hopefully you'll see I've made a few typos, and I've tried to correct them as I'm going through already, but if you're anything like me, that's probably the first thing I would do when I had an error later on. So assume it was probably a typing mistake and look to make sure I'd entered what I thought I had. So if the value is lower than minimum, then the value is going to be equal to minimum. If the value is greater than the maximum, then the value is equal to the maximum. So basically what it's doing is if you've got a number bigger than that, it's just changing it. And then it's going to return that value. Okay, so that's going to get sent back into the program. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to add in um, some of the key numbers we need. So these sections here are variables. And in Python, variables are written in lowercase, and they can change as the program goes on. So the dx is the doodle's x coordinate, the dy is the doodle's y coordinate. So obviously that's going to change, and the program will change those as we go. Starting with a score of zero, starting with a speed of zero, and starting with a frame of zero. So all of those need to be programmed at the start, but they need to change as well. These are constants, and we write those in capital letters, and we use underscores between them, and the constants don't change as the program goes on. You could change them before the program runs in order um, that you, you had to be a big gap between the platforms, or you had a larger score, but during the game we don't change. Now, Python actually doesn't distinguish between these. Um, so it's more how we set them up, but some programming languages do. Um, so if you do choose in the um, uh, coding to change the constant, it will let you, but it's not good practice. Okay, both these are also global because they're being set at a point where the whole of the, where they affect the whole of the program. Okay, so let's try and add these in. Okay, so dx equals 50. And again, I'm missing off the comments here, but if I was doing this, um, in a less time pressured manner, I would leave these in because when I want to go back to these, it's good to know what they are. We're also trying to use variable names that make sense so that when I'm looking at these at some point in the far and distant future, I understand that score means score and not something straight. So gap underscore between platforms plus two, okay. The score between levels equals 10. So that's the variables and the constants added in. Now, we need to create a background, but we also need to create this time delay. So on this one, um, the background is an image, and we're just going to create that using numbers between 0 and 9. 
th uh, showing the level of brightness of zero is the LED is off, nine is the brightest, three is fairly faint, and the idea is that you'll be able to see the doodle jump in relation to the background. I'll be honest, I find three a little bit difficult to see at times. So if you find it the same, you can always go back and make this a four or a five later on. These are the time delays on the level. So when you start on the first level, the time delay is 30 and then it reduces down. And what that means is that levels will get more difficult as we go on. And because Python counts from zero, we're starting from this first level here. Okay, so let's just bring this back up and let's add this in. So let's say that the background is equal to the image and we're just pressing in. So the micro bits only goes across um, uh, five LEDs. So we're never going to have more than five entries in the space. I'm just going to move that down so I make sure I'm putting in the same code that I did last time. Okay. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, so nothing on that line. Yep, okay. Again, making sure that any parentheses we open, we also close. Then we're creating a list, which we're calling levels, because they're the levels. Try again, stick with rational names, the bits we're doing. And again, you can change these later. I, once the program's up and running, there's nothing to stop you going through and modifying these. Current level, as you see, is written in lowercase. It's a variable because we'll need to change it because the level that the person's on during the game will obviously change. Now, we now need to create the main loop, and the main loop is obviously the bit that's actually going to allow the game to run. The indentation on this is really important, and because I'm using MIV, it gives you a bit of a clue as to the lines here. The key thing here is when it runs, so while true, we need to start by setting the gravity, and we need to start by um, defining what's happening with the A and the B key. So basically A and B are changing the X position by five points. And again, you could change this and it will either increase your movement or reduce it. So at the moment it either goes uh, minus five or plus five. So it's not going up or down, it's only going left or right. Okay. So I'm going to say while true. Okay. If the speed is below five, then the speed, and again, moves quite nice because it will um, allow you to select the options here, which kind of be like me reduces your um, number of typing mistakes, but you don't necessarily need to do this. It works just as well in the Python website. So if button underscore A is underscore pressed, okay, then the DX position changes by five points. And then the same for this one, so if button underscore B dot is underscore pressed, then we do the same thing, so we can change DX again, but this time we're changing it by um, plus five, so it's going the other way, okay? Now this is part of the same loop, so we need to make sure this is going. And what's happening here is that we're now using that check section that we created earlier. So we're going to check that the boundaries of dy are between 0 and 99 and that dx are between 0 and 99. Then we're going to display the background. And because the micro bit doesn't actually have 99 positions, it's then going to reduce it down. So it's going to scale down these coordinates to fit on the micro bit. And then this is going to increase the frame rates to match the page. Right. So again, if we just have a quick look at this, what we should see is we're going to say dy equals check bound. dy is got to be between 0 and 99. dx equals check bound. And dx has got to be between 0 and 99. And again, if we just scroll up for a second, you'll see this is, relates to this. So we're using the check bound. And these are the three positions. So the dy, okay, is the value, is it dx or dy? The minimum value is zero, okay, and the maximum value is 99. We're not going to need to change those, but if we did for some reason, we would only need to change the inputs here, and the function we've created will cope with that. Okay, then we're going to display the background. So we can say display show background, because although we've created it, we haven't called it until now. 
Then we're going to scale the uh, content down. So we're going to say dx should be scaled and it should be an integer. And we're going to say it's going to be five asterisk dx divided by 100. I'm going to do the same here, dy underscore scale. You can do copy and paste. Be very careful if you do that because that's normally, again, a key point at which people start to make uh, mistakes. I'm going to set the frame, so the frame is going to increase by one. Okay. Now, we're going to look at the next level of the main loop. So what's happening here is we're setting the scroll down and you'll see the next level and the new platform are indented in that. They only happen when this happens. So we need to make sure that's the same case for ours. So we're going to say if the frame, which my terrible uh, typing skills again, it's a modulo of levels. I'm going to say current level, just crazy that. Okay, close the random notification that's come up. Is equal to zero, then the score is going to be increased by one. The background is going to be background, and it's going to shift down by one position. We're still indented, so we're going to stick with this. I'm going to say if the score modulo score, and again, because we've created this as a constant before, it will now recognize score between levels equals zero. Then the current level is going to be plus increase by one. I'm going to say display is going to scroll. And this is just basically a message that's going to come up. So it's going to say level. We need to put space, and otherwise it will merge all together. Plus the string. Okay. And what we're doing is we're taking the string. Let's move this across so you can see this a bit more easily. Okay. Just pull that across there for a second. Okay, and pull it down so I can see it at the same time. Okay, there we go. So you can say the string of the current underscore level is going to be plus one. Now, the reason for that is because your current level, for instance, is the level that you're on. So let's say we're on level one. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to display that you're about to start level two. So it takes the level one command and it prints it with a one, an extra number on. So it basically saying you're starting level two, which is quite a neat way around uh, working what level people are about to go on to. Okay. So let's just go back onto there. Let's press enter. Right. Okay. So next thing we need to put on here, go back to there. So we're still indented in line with display scroll, although you can't see it there, but you can see I'm slightly further across here. Now, if the current level is greater than or equal to the length of the levels, then the current level equals the length of the levels minus one, okay? Now again, it's trying to indent us under here, but we don't want to. We want to now drop back so that we're still in line with the other if. Okay, so we're going to say, because it's not part of this core, so if current the score is a modulo of the gap between the platforms, okay, then the platform underscore start is equal to a random number, random integer, between 0 and 3. And the platform underscore end is equal to a random number which is the platform start plus one and four so basically the platform start number can be anything between zero and three and the platform end can be one number bigger than the start number and four okay and then for x in range, we're going to say platform start to platform end. And we're going to say the background. And we're going to set the pixel here. So we're using the underscore 
I'm going to say between x, 0, and 3. Okay, so we've set a fair bit of the loop up here. Now what we want to do is we want to set it so that we've got um, a new platform coming. And again, you should see on this, this is the bit we've already created. So we're now going back a level of indentation here. So again, if I show you this on here, okay, we now need to go right back here so that this isn't in line with if score, but is in line with this previous line, which if we go up is the if frame bit. Okay, so that's where we're starting from on this one. Either we can go right back and, in, and just press tab. Or maybe I'm just going to use delete. So we're going to set the background if you land on a platform here. So we're going to say if background dot get pixel. Now I'm just going to put a line in there as well to separate this. So it looks like it's merged into the other one. I'm going to do dx underscore scaled I'm going to say dy underscore scaled is equal to three and okay just to show that the speed underscore of y is greater than two so and speed underscore y is greater than two okay so if both of those things are true then the speed underscore y is equal to minus 11. Again, we're going to go back, so we want this to line up. So, elif, if that's not true, dy scaled is equal to 4. And we're going to display show the image, and we use the sad image, so it doesn't look very happy. It's not gone right. We need to put a sleep in there, because otherwise the image will disappear almost immediately. And then we can do display, scroll, and this way you can show your score. So you can add additional messages in here, but we're going to put score, okay? And then we put plus in here, I'm going to use a string of the score, okay? So it's going to convert it into a string in order to print and break because that's where we end the loop. Again, lining it with the elif here, we want to display set underscore pixel, and we want to do dx underscore scaled, dy underscore scaled, okay. And then we want to sleep for about 20, okay. And if we just maximize that, this is what we should be seeing. So we're importing the modules, we're creating the function, we're setting the variables, we're setting the constants, setting the backgrounds. We're creating a list and a variable we're then creating a loop that runs the program. And at this point, if this works, okay, we should be able to flash this to the micro bit. You should see some flashing hopefully appearing on the back of this micro bit here. Yep, okay. And then if I reset this, we should see this working. Now it's not, so what does it say? Line 26, right, what does it not like on my line 26? Let's just have a quick look at this, okay. Okay, you can see actually what I've done here. If speed is less than five, but that's not right. It should be if speed of y. <clears throat> so let's try that again. Let's flash that. Wait, let's flash. Okay, that, right, that worked. Now this is a different issue. Now this is my actual ability to play this game. So it comes out with a doodle thing. So let's try and do that again. So if we move it, it should go, it should go left, or right, and then left and right. Okay, and then it should show us a score. So it says score four. I'm sure you guys can do slightly better than I can on this one. Okay.